One style of photography that I get asked about a lot is boudoir photography. There are definitely people who ask how to handle models, but a lot more people want to know how to shoot their girlfriends and wives in this sexy style, or sometimes how to talk their girlfriends and wives into this type of shoot. Basically, many photographers and would-be models are intimidated by what they see out there every day. Playboy, Victoria's Secret, these absolutely beautiful images that take lots of people and lots of money to produce. But I'm here to tell you, that's great. Those photos are beautiful. But you can obtain beautiful, sexy boudoir photos without all that. I did a two-part boudoir shoot. The location and styling are classic. The equipment was minimal, nothing too fancy, and most of the photos are more modest sexy. The main wardrobe was a sheet, and I was able to cover or uncover as much as I wanted to. And those are the three things that I want to talk about. Style, location, and equipment. Before I get into those three things, let's talk about what the two different parts are. Part one is all low-key lighting and more overtly sexy. Part two is lighter and more fun. It might be a little less scary for the beginner types. Maybe part one is more for the advanced or confident model. Location. The easiest location for both of these for me was my bed behind me. <laughs> but really, you could use a couch, a neat chair, the bathroom can be a cool place. I like the bed for beginners because the model has a canvas, if you will, to move around in, sitting up, laying down, and it's always gonna be fairly comfortable. The only thing to remember in the bed is to sit up straight. It can be easy to slouch sitting in a comfy bed, but slouching isn't pretty. Also, choosing a location other than the studio can put the model at ease a bit. The studio is an intimidating place. I certainly feel more exposed when I'm in the studio. It's just kind of clinical. When choosing where you want to shoot, don't feel restricted by your current setup. Move stuff around if you need to. I took things off of my nightstand and then I moved my nightstand out of the photo entirely. I took the pillows off the bed because they looked messy. In the past, I've taken photos off the walls, moved couches. Create a background that isn't going to be too distracting, but maybe we'll add a little bit of interest to the photos so that you don't get that clinical studio look that I was talking about before. Styling. This is more important in boudoir photography than in standard portrait photography. One, it adds to the atmosphere. It really sets the tone for the image, but also it can make the subject feel sexy and maybe even more comfortable or confident, which will definitely make for better photos. Just because it's important to the photo though, doesn't mean that it needs to be anything extravagant or expensive. A simple t-shirt and panties can be just as sexy as an expensive and possibly uncomfortable lingerie outfit. For both parts of this shoot, I went pretty naked because I just didn't want a bunch of wardrobe. I wanted to keep it simple. Everyone has sheets on their bed. Well, I assume anyway. <laughs> so that's what I used as the main wardrobe. I had the top sheet loose on the bed and I just pulled it up around me to cover me up in different ways. It's something that a model with any body type can pull off. For part one, I used red satin sheets as wardrobe. Okay, before I go any further, I know red satin sheets are pretty cheesy, but you know what? What better time to be cheesy than in boudoir photography? One thing to keep in mind though, if you are going cheesy with one element of the shoot, try not to be cheesy in the other elements. Like, go a little understated with makeup and facial expressions if your sheets are screaming sexy cheese ball. <laughs> I did add actually one piece of wardrobe, uh, black thigh highs. They covered me up a little bit and they added just a little bit of visual interest. For part two, I used white sheets and a pair of black panties. This lent itself to a lighter mood. This setup might be more appropriate for more reluctant models. It's certainly not as in your face as red satin sheets. This would also be the perfect time for the t-shirt and panties look or even just some cute PJs. You could work the sheet in conjunction with them. One thing to be careful of when using a sheet as wardrobe is to make sure that you don't end up being just a head popping out over the sheet that's hanging in front of you. Get creative with wrapping it around yourself or letting a part of your body peek out. Another thing to think about when using sheets iron them. <laughs> Wrinkly sheets will definitely kill the mood. I do have another video where I talk specifically about dressing for boudoir shoots. If you're watching this video from snaptrick.com, the link to it is in the blog post. But if you're watching this video on YouTube, the link is in the description of the video. One last thing on styling, hair and makeup. I went pretty natural for both of these. Um, remember how I said to keep the super sexy elements to one or so? <laughs> well, for part one with the red satin sheets, I didn't want a whole lot of makeup because I felt that it would just be going overboard. For part two, I went similarly natural. 
for hair. I wanted it to be soft so that I could flop it around a bit and you know, put my hands up in it. Equipment. Let's talk about lighting first. Soft light is the gold standard. It is much more flattering and smooths out the imperfections a bit. It's also just more romantic. To get that soft effect, use a soft box or reflector or otherwise bounce the light off of the ceiling or a wall. Now, sometimes harsher light can be super sexy, but it's not forgiving and shows every imperfection. Typically, you're gonna be looking for the more complimentary effect of soft light. These are what I used. They are fluorescent continuous lights with soft boxes on them. One is obviously larger, <laughs> the other is smaller and produces less light. For the low key lighting effect of part one, I wanted more light directed on me. So I used the larger light as the main light and had it pointed at me. For the low key lighting effect of part one, I wanted more light directed on me. So I used the larger light as the main light and had it pointed at me. Then I used the smaller light for just the little bit of fill that I needed on the other side. For the brighter effect in part two, I bounced the light from this larger light head off of the ceiling and had the smaller light directed at me. This mimicked a more even sunlighty type of effect with more of the background lit up. On a related note to lighting, make sure your subject knows which is the main light and make sure that they know how to play to that light. Typically, you want them to turn their face and whatever else that you want highlighted to the light. However, don't hold yourself to that as a rigid rule. Sometimes having the face a tad darkened in shadow could be interesting and tell a story. Now for your camera setup. Whatever camera body you use, your lens selection is important in this type of shoot. You'll need to be able to open the aperture up a bit, and here's why. In traditional boudoir photography, we see different depth of field effects. This allows you to really draw the viewer's eye to one area of the image, or even draw the viewer's eye away from an area of the image. For example, you may want to have a depth of field which allows you to have your subject all in focus, but have the background out of focus. Or you may want to have a super shallow depth of field where you can focus in on one area of the subject, blurring out the rest to either mask areas of concern because all of us ladies have areas that concern us, or to just really focus on a particular aspect of the photo, like the subject's face. To get different depth of field effects, you'll need to vary your aperture. Like I said before, being able to open your lens's aperture up to f4 or f2.8, maybe even f1.8, can really enable you to capture more dramatic effects. Something to keep in mind though, is that some lenses can tend to be a little bit softer the closer they get to being wide open. One more thing that I put in the equipment category is post-processing. I absolutely love a natural, beautiful, relaxed boudoir portrait, but you know, Boudoir photography lends itself very well to applying some cool filter effects as well. Black and white is always great, but here's where you can really get creative with vignetting, cross-processing, and the curves of the image. Oh, and of course, a little skin smoothing never hurt anyone. But I do caution you not to be too liberal with it. I mentioned Victoria's Secret and Playboy in the beginning of this video. They take a heavy hand to the model's skin in post-processing, but I feel that it's just too much. Oftentimes, the subject ends up not even really looking like themselves. So, moderation is key here. Okay, friends, I admit that boudoir shoots are some of my favorite. You can be as simple or as dramatic as you want and create an image for someone that will make them feel good about themselves. I do have a sample photo up for everyone at snapchick.com along with some technical specifications. And VIPs, log in at snapchick.com to see a gallery of images and your video where I go more in depth about my setup and challenges for the shoot.